Today, we're making mega Christmas trees that tower 25 feet tall. Now, mega trees are cone-shaped Christmas trees that can reach heights of 25, 30, and even 40 feet tall. Today, I'll show you how to quickly and easily make your own mega tree, which will transform your yard into a winter wonderland. So join me for this awesome tutorial. To begin building our mega tree, we can do it one of two ways. I always do a mega tree the temporary fashion, which is using rebar and conduit pipe. But this year I'm gonna do a more permanent fixture and I'm going to use the PVC sleeve that comes with flagpoles. We're gonna dig a hole into the ground and fill it with concrete and put this inside of the ground. That way when we remove the flag, we'll always have this into the ground where we can simply plop it back in. So if you're doing it the temporary method, we're gonna be using conduit pipe. Get conduit pipe cut to about five to five and a half feet tall. Once you have your pipe, get some rebar. I have it right here. Get your rebar. This one can be the four feet. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drive them into the ground together. Drive the conduit pipe first with a sledgehammer or a hammer. You wanna drive it into the ground at least 18 inches to 24 inches. You wanna really get it in there. And your rebar, you want to do it next to it or as close as possible so you can drive them in together. After you're done, I recommend doing a, a second conduit pipe or a second rebar because you wanna have three pipes in the ground that are really held together. You can put them with zip ties so that they're not like this, you can just hold them together with a couple zip ties. That way it gives you a solid base for the flagpole to go over it. But this is a temporary method and I'm gonna go with the permanent method today, which is digging a hole into the ground, putting the PVC sleeve in there, filling it with concrete, and just making sure that the concrete is about four inches below the surface of the ground so that we can put some soil over it and maybe some grass can grow over it. And the only thing that should be there is the PVC hole. So let's start. Before we start digging, make sure you check with your local utility companies, make sure you know where your irrigation water lines are or any other buried cable in there because you don't wanna cut it, you don't wanna hit anything. So please be mindful before you dig, you call your local number to ensure that anything is marked or that you know where everything is. So let's get to digging. I wanted to take a quick moment to mention the first book I've written. It's called Little Olive and the Wally Bat, and it's available on Amazon via paperback or Kindle. It's rated for kids ages two to six years old, and it follows a brave little olive that gets lost and is found by a very helpful brown bat. If anyone wants to support me or read it to their little ones, go check it out, Little Olive and the Wally Bat on Amazon. Now let's get back to this amazing tutorial. Before we put the PVC sleeve into the ground, you wanna tape up the bottom. It's gonna go in there like that. You wanna tape it up really good so none of the concrete flows into the pipe. And then I'm just putting one little piece of tape on the top so that none of the cement or debris falls into it. So we're just gonna put it into the hole and then fill it with concrete. So remember, we want the hole to be deeper than the actual PVC sleeve only because we wanna fill it in with a little bit of concrete on the bottom so that there's a solid base. Remember, this sleeve is only gonna come up from the ground maybe one or two inches because you wanna make sure that your lawnmower and nothing else can hit the pipe once you're ready to mow your lawn. So it's only gonna be like this and you can either use regular concrete, I'm using fast setting concrete to make it quick work and we're gonna fill it in and follow the instructions on the concrete bag. So a lot of you may be wondering what Christmas lights I'm using, and it's this brand right here, Holiday Living from Lowe's. But you can use any LED Christmas lights from any of the big box stores. So one thing to note is that these LED lights allow you to connect up to 45 sets end to end. That is unheard of with traditional Christmas lights, which used to be incandescent. 
These modern Christmas lights are all LED and most of them allow you to connect up to 45, others do 35. So this Christmas tree is taking 20 strands, but it's all going to be connected to one extension cord. It's not going to blow a fuse or affect your circuit breaker because they're LED. They don't consume a lot of electricity. So definitely get LED Christmas lights. And this is what we're left with. You can see the cement has hardened. The PVC pipe is right there. And what I love about this is that this is pretty low. The grass is low. So this is almost level to the grass. So when the grass grows during the spring and the summer, you won't be able to see this. And that's why it's gonna be a permanent fixture in my yard because you won't be able to see it from the street. And then we filled it with cement. It's already hardened. So now we're ready to put the flagpole. So I'm gonna list the flagpole I use in the description below, but make sure it has the pulley system. So you can get any flag you want that has a pulley system and you can get it 25 feet tall, 30 feet is a bit pushing it, but 25 should be a good one. So we're gonna put this, we're gonna put the um, nylon cord on the inside like this. We're gonna put this on the top and then up here we can attach our star. You don't have to attach a star, but I'm gonna to try to attach an LED star up here. You can remove this just like that and we can attach it somehow to the top over here or just leave it without it. All right, so this part over here is really important because this is what's gonna hold the Christmas lights up. Now, I found this Christmas light mega tree attachment on Etsy. I'm not associated with the company or the individual that makes it, but I found it, I liked it. It looks like it's 3D printed maybe. So what we're gonna do is it has two holes right here. We're gonna put some wire in there and I'm just gonna double it up just like this, like that. We want to make this loop over here so it can be pulled upwards. So we're gonna put it right in here. Okay, good. Just like that. And then we're going to twist this about and we're gonna cut off anything that's extra on the side. But here we have the nylon rope that we attach to the pulley system. What we're gonna do is attach it right over here. Make a really good knot over here. You don't want this to fall. I'm just doing a, a knot to show you. Obviously you want it to be more secure than that. And now with the other end of the nylon rope, we'll be able to pull it up just like that. All the Christmas lights will be attached over here. But now we can stand this pole up so we can start attaching the Christmas lights. And look how we rigged the star. Remember, this flagpole comes with a ball over here on the top, but we got this Moravian style LED star. We put it on top and used some duct tape. You can use clear duct tape. I had colored duct tape and we wrapped it up to hold the star to the ball right here. And then the cable, we just put zip ties all the way down. So it's held against the flagpole. Now I put some electrical tape over the ground opening of the extension cord because I just don't want any water to get in here. I have been a lot of problems with water getting into my electrical equipment during December. So I'm trying to prevent that from happening. We did that, we're ready to put the flag up. All right, so we have our star on top. We have our Christmas lights holder. Now it's time to put it up. And this is made out of aluminum. So it's pretty lightweight. So just be careful while you're putting it up. It's top heavy right now, so you don't want it to fall. But just like this, we're putting it into the PVC pipe that we cemented into the ground. And bam, we have it here. So this, the other end of the nylon rope gets attached to this little dock-like cleat right here. And then like that, bam we can start putting all of the lights on here. And when we're ready, when we're done, we're simply gonna pull it all the way up. So let's start putting some Christmas lights on top. All right, to put the Christmas lights, we're only going to loop it around like this and put it in there just like that. This is the female end here. We're going to plug it in. The line is gonna go down and it's gonna come back up when we plug the next one up here, down, up, down, up, down, up. And once we're done doing that, then we can hoist it all the way up. So I wanted to show you something really quickly. As we keep on going around, we plugged in our next one right over here, see? Bam, this is gonna go all the way down and let me show you something. This is what I wanted to show you. This is the end. What we're gonna do is we're gonna plug the next one in here 
and this we're just going to leave like this and then this one's going to go attached on the top. So we're leaving this like this because once we put it up we can stake these down or I think I'm going to do a PVC ring around it so that the lights aren't directly on the ground. And I say that because you don't want lights to be in a wet area where they can get moisture into the connections. So just leave it like that, like this, and then go back up. All right, so here's another tip. Once you've completed attaching all of the Christmas lights, you need to raise this slowly. Reason being that if you raise it too fast, all of this is gonna get tangled up together. So it's good to have a second person who can keep on stretching them out like this and preventing them from getting all tangled up. It's happened to me before, well, as I'm raising it, all of these come together, it's one big mess and you don't want that. Raise it slowly, have somebody else separating them nicely as it's going up, it'll make your life so much easier. And once you're done, this is what it should look like. You could decide to skip one of these teeth, skip every other one to use less lights, but we go big here, so most of these have a Christmas light in them and now we're ready to lift this all up. So if you don't have a second person to help you, a great tip is to use landscape staples. You can use any size. This is just a temporary method to prevent these lines from thrashing about. So grab it and for each line that comes back up, put it like this. We have another one right over here. We're doing it just like this. So as the tree is lifted up, these are gonna stay like this because otherwise you're gonna see, they're all gonna come rushing together. It's gonna be a horrible mess. It took me so long to untangle one of them that I didn't do it like this, but this is a great method to do it. If you don't have someone, or even if you have someone, it makes your life so much easier. And this is what we're left with. We have all of these lights and we're ready just to pull it up. So let's undo the rope and then let's start pulling it up. And just like this, We'll do it all the way to the top. Just make sure you do it uh, slowly because then all of these lights are gonna get tangled. There we go. And we'll keep on doing this until we go all the way to the top. To finish off our mega tree, we're gonna be placing PVC on the base and we're gonna do a ring around the mega tree. Now, in order to bend the PVC pipe, I've driven these rebar into the ground. These are two foot rebar, use a hammer, drive them into the ground. And we're doing a diameter of eight feet. So this rebar is eight feet from the rebar on the opposite end. And all we're doing with this PVC pipe is pushing it into the rebar like this and using a zip tie to hold it in place. We're gonna hold it in place and it's gonna be just like that. You can do it a few inches off of the ground like this, so it keeps the lights off the ground, and all the lights will be uniform around this ring. In order to get the perfect distance between one rebar over there and the other one over here, we just lay the PVC piece across like this, and we mark it at the halfway point, right? Four feet there, four feet here. We drive the rebar over there, and then we drive another rebar over here, and then we move on like this. Bam, go to that side, do the same thing like that till we get about I would say eight pieces, 10 pieces of rebar into the ground. That'll offer you enough support to start bending your PVC. I wanted to show you a little bit closer up of how we did this. As you can see right there, we have the coupling that's attaching or connecting both PVC pipes together. It comes around like that. And then we have another coupling piece right there. That's why it's important to use PVC cement. Then once we're done, we just attach it inside of the rebar ring that we made. You see? And it's keeping it all in place. We put zip ties on each rebar to hold the PVC pipe together and it's perfect. Also, here's a pro tip. Attach your PVCs together on a flat surface. Just attach them one next to the other. And then after you've attached three PVC pipes together, then you can bring it and curve it into this circle. Because if you try to curve them here, it's gonna be very difficult. So attach your PVC pipes together and any excess, you can just cut it. And at the final piece, you can attach it together. Look right down here, we have excess right down there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it right over here. Or should I say right there, we're gonna get our coupling piece and then we're gonna put it together. But because this part is gonna to wanna to get out like that, 
Get another rebar, put it right there. Hammer it into the ground, cut it, get your coupling piece, PVC cement, put it together, and you're good to go. Remember, we're keeping this several inches off the ground. I'm doing about six inches off the ground because you don't want the lights to be touching the ground. If you live in an area with lots of snow or lots of rain, it gets wet here in December, so we're just trying to keep them off the ground.